welcome to Feed Dump, where it's spring, and that means spring cleaning. And therefore, we are things that you find when you clean your house out. I'm, of course, a pile of old love letters from an ex-boyfriend who you now know to be a complete shitbag. Then you gleefully burn them. Joining me this week is Silverfish. <sighs> so many silverfish. They're everywhere. <laughs> They're gonna be gone. And clothes that fit. Once upon a time. I used to be a size six. How could I let this happen? A man from Scranton, Pennsylvania, truly learned that his mother-in-law could hate him from beyond the grave when her tombstone that he was decorating for Easter suddenly toppled over and crushed him to death. Hang on, something actually happened in Scranton? That's not just like a mythical place from the office? This guy didn't work at a paper company by any chance, did he? No, 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 There's a lot of stuff around here that could crush us to death. You kill that music, not me. Kill the music. Ugh, you guys never let me have any fun. Also, who decorates a tombstone for Easter? Wait a minute, he was decorating for Easter? So this guy is just being like, take advantage of the season of people coming back from the dead or something to get his mother-in-law back. I really hope her last words were something to the effect of, you'll marry my daughter over my dead body. <laughs> Sorry. This is a helpful reminder that it's just not a good idea to have your Easter egg hunts in a graveyard. Can we also talk about how much this guy must have hated his mother-in-law to get a tombstone that would just fall over? Like, what was it made of? Rocks and paper mache? Spite. Ah, spite. The frailest of all foundations and building materials. Eyebrows are being raised, but body temperatures are probably being lowered by a Montreal night nudist who's been jogging through North End parks wearing nothing but athletic shoes and a pair of socks this spring. It's about minus 10 degrees Celsius. It's not like he's really flaunting much of anything, because at that temperature, don't things just sort of like shrivel up? Get tiny? I believe the term you're looking for is turtling. <laughs> turtling. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> turtling? Turtling. Okay, look, when even your personal bits are going, nope, you probably shouldn't be where you are. Listen to your parts. Listen to them. Also, just why? Like, on so many levels, why would you do that? Why would you jog naked? Why would you do it in the middle of winter? Why would you? Why would you? Why would you? Well, Ash, now, viewers, if you're inclined to run, you might know this, but sometimes men get a problem where their nipples chafe against their shirts and when it's cold outside, you know, you get the hard nips. Uh, and what I'm thinking is this guy took off his shirt to avoid the whole nipple chafing situation. If you don't believe me that this exists, just Google bloody nipples, by the way. It's pretty amazing. Oh, can I get a shot? Oh, I can, because I'm the editor. Look at that. Gross. How about this? Ew. Amazing. And maybe he just kept going because it felt so good. He's free ballin'. If your nipples are sore because they're chafing against your shirt, we have solutions for that. They're called bras. Women have been putting up with them forever. Try one. Or tape. Masking tape, duct tape, scotch tape, washi tape, band-aids. I like to think that somebody actually did bring up all these solutions to him, but by the time they did, he was like, nope, it's already off, it's back there somewhere, going for it. There's a new goddamn national hero, and he lives in Chicago, Illinois, and he has done what us mere mortals could only dream of doing. Someone towed his Jeep, and so he did what we all want to. He seized the initiative. He got in his Jeep, and he drove it off the tow truck and got away. What are you going to use four-wheel drive for in the city, they said. This story is fantastic for two reasons. Number one, this guy actually had the balls to try that. Number two, this is the only tow truck company in the world that doesn't lock the tires of the car they're towing. When God is on your side, you can defeat anything, even those tow truck locks. He's got Jesus and his truck. Hallelujah! Marika. Are we sure it was the original owner? Are we sure that it wasn't just the tow truck's buddy? arranged to just drive that jeep home. Tally, how could you take something so beautiful, like a untrained driver pulling a really dangerous stunt in the middle of the city streets, and turn into something ugly like car theft? I mean, aside from having a lot of common sense. I'll bet that you could take all the details from this situation and make a really kick-ass country song. Oh, you can't take my jeep away, I love it so, cause that's right, I'm in Chicago, land of 
freelance justice America. Yeah, country music. Bling, 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 bling. <laughs> oh, they tried to take away my truck. The one with the cab where Sue and I fucked. And I said, no, you can't have her. That's my gal. We've been together forever. So I drove her off the back of that toe and onto the highway. Here I go. America. Ooh, I got a better run. All right, ready? <clears throat> Don't take my Jeep, my super cool Jeep. Cause I can't pay your lowly fines. And if you take my Jeep, my super cool Jeep, I'll drive it off the back of your motherfucking tow truck anyway! America! Um, blank, 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 blank. <laughs> what I've actually learned from this is that it's actually really difficult to make a kick ass country music song. You know what, Ash? You are correct. I am not good at making up country tunes. But that's okay, because there may be other better sources for news, but they don't have that hat. And they don't have this hat, because I am a lovely princess, in addition to being a best-selling country singer-songwriter. Blangity blangity blang. Marka.